Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Eat, Meat, and Question Everything. Hello, how are you? All right, if you are watching on YouTube, you can see I am clearly recording this in my car. Um, so if you're just listening, I am in my gym parking lot. I am in my car in the covered parking lot. It was raining, so hopefully it doesn't pick up again because I don't know how loud that will be. But if you hear any weird noises or people yelling, that is why. I am taking this window while I can because I missed last week. And I missed last week because I was feeling a little overwhelmed and I wasn't like in the best mindset. So I'm like, I'm not going to force myself to show up with my wonky energy. We will just take a week off. So here we are, and it's going to be a solo episode, clearly. I don't have someone <laughs> in the back seat that's going to pop in, but I am feeling good. I am feeling chatty. I am feeling caffeinated. I've got my little Dunkin' Donuts um, right here. It is half-calf. Um, mm, hot. I had to take a little sip. I don't love Dunkin', but I didn't want to get out in the rain and go to Starbucks, um, so I had to do the drive through so here we are. I've got my trusty list um, of things to talk about. If you're not following me on Instagram, head over there because I often put question boxes in my stories to find out what you guys want me to talk about, any questions or topics. And that's what we are doing today. But first, I do want to mention that my cookbook is now available for pre-sale. Yay! And I do want to thank those of you who have already already ordered because we had an amazing first day. We got, let's see, a little bestseller tab on Amazon. There's like a little banner on there. I hope it's still there because things change every day. <laughs> uh, we were number one in meats. And I'm saying we because you guys helped me get there. Like this is an us thing. Number one in meat books. I want to say maybe like number two or something in low carb books in weight loss books and then we were also number four overall of all cookbooks and like i said before these change every day it goes by i think like how the sales were that day um so that's awesome and i was super pumped i thought you know the first day went great i do not know how many i sold I did not ask. I do not want to know because in my head, I thought it went well and I'm very happy and I don't want to hear a number that might make me be like, oh, that's it. Like, I'm just going to live in my own little bubble and continue to be thrilled with how the first day went. So it is available on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Target, Walmart, and shoot, I should have looked. I have this graphic that shows something else. I want to say like indie.com or something. So check out Amazon. I feel like that's the easiest one. I have the link below. Um, and the cool thing about Amazon is it's not going to ship until it's not going to ship. Well, it's not going to ship till October, but it's not going to charge you until it ships. And in between your purchase date and the date it ships, if it goes on sale, you will be locked into that price. Barnes and Nobles does that too. Um, so head over and grab it. I would appreciate it um, because pre-sales are super important for an author. It also tells the stores like how well it's doing. So like as of now, it's just going to be online as far as I know. But if we do well with pre-sales, then a store might want to carry it in their store. And that would be awesome. So that is that. A little bit of housekeeping. Um, where should we dive in? I have this list that I probably should have put in order of what I want to talk about, but we'll just dive right in. Okay, somebody was asking my favorite recipe that I'm nervous about like getting the reviews on. And <clears throat> I'll have to say, oh, I don't know. I'm really excited. I have two pizza recipes. So one of them has pork and one of them does not because I know a lot of you don't eat pork. But the one that has pork, I am so excited to share about. Uh, I think you'll all love it. Um, what I'm a little nervous on is I'd say like the cinnamon rolls. I'm obsessed with them. My daughter likes them. Archer's in eh about them. But you know what? I might actually, next time I make them for them, put a little monk fruit powder, powder, monk fruit sugar in there, you know, for my little sugar addicts. It's a keto sugar. Maybe that will help him like it. Um, but that's like probably one of my favorite ones that I'm like a little nervous that, you know, some people might not love. Okay, what else? Favorite carnivore dessert. 
Okay, well, cinnamon rolls, since we're talking about those, I guess it's not technically a dessert, but I love them. Um, cupcakes are going to be in my cookbook and ice cream. I just made vanilla ice cream uh, the other day for my family. I am off dairy right now, so that was torture to make that. But I also put monk fruit sugar in there for them. And Jeff said it was the best ice cream he's ever had. And he, well, okay, maybe he didn't say ever had, but he's like, it's amazing. And he's not very... I don't want to say he's not giving with the compliments, but he's just, he likes everything and he's easy to please. And it is what it is. He doesn't get excited like I do over food, but they all loved it. And my kids don't like my ice cream normally um, because it's not sweet. So I put a little monk fruit in there and they were like, give me more. Just like Britney Spears. Uh, brown butter bites are great. I haven't made those in a while. What else? Okay. Comfor were you comfortable cooking before developing recipes? Gosh, I have to make sure I'm not yelling. I have this microphone on. <laughs> I get excited. Were you comfortable cooking before developing recipes or did you grow into it? So I've been cooking for a long time. I've loved it. I used to cook for a living on yachts. But so yes, I've been comfortable cooking. What's been hard for me is actually like creating the recipes because however I've cooked, it's just been a little of this, a little of that. So actually like measuring things out and getting them into a proper recipe, that's been challenging for me. But yeah, I've always loved to cook. I've always been in the kitchen. So this is right up my alley. Fe favorite carnivore moments. Okay. What were my favorite carnivore moments? <clears throat> well, a few interesting ones. Like I've had a lot of press written about me, which is so wild that eating this way is deemed newsworthy. But a lot of articles, I'm trying to think, I should have wrote some stuff down. I know I was mentioned in Rolling Stones. Newsweek, ha they've done a couple articles on me. Inside Edition, like on TV, they interviewed me. So that was on TV. And then Dr. Phil used that clip and played it on his show. And what other ones like daily mail dare I say that new york post just like random things have had articles on me so like that's kind of cool like it's just it's weird but it's like okay cool and of course my other favorite carnivore moment is getting my book deal so thank you tiktok for that that's where they found me tiktok hates me <laughs> and the other thing i'd say is like the community i have made i've met so many amazing people online i have made like super close friends they're are people that I, you know, am now like texting with. Hi, Loretta and Jenny. <laughs> you know, we met on YouTube and now we're good friends. And yeah, just this awesome community. Like it's just, it's just been amazing. You guys are all awesome. Okay. <laughs> Somebody asked, what are your views on the world? And then they're like, oh, that's probably not a good thing to bring up. Yeah, probably not. But let me just, you know, dive into that and overshare. If Jeff's listening, he's probably like, oh my God, Courtney, don't do it. Don't do it. So let me put my tinfoil hat on. No, we will keep this short and sweet. I, um, I, you could totally, you could label me as a conspiracy theorist. Sure. Go ahead. Are they really conspiracies when they keep coming true though? So I will say, you know, I, <laughs> I get nervous around this topic. I don't want anybody to know what, you know, I don't know that I'm like a wackadoodle. Like, I don't know. I, I have some thoughts. I follow a few accounts that are also into like the conspiracies and I would love to have um, one of those girls on to talk more, but I'm afraid that, I mean, I don't want to be afraid. I should always be myself, but I don't want to turn a lot of you guys off. But some of my favorite topics on in this realm of conspiracies would be like a good starter one would be like go down the rabbit hole of NASA and if we landed on the moon or not. So I'll just leave it there. Let me know if you want to hear more about this. Like I could totally do a conspiracy podcast if <laughs> Jeff lets me. Oh my goodness. I love talking about it though. All right, next one. Ingredients that I'm okay with, such as like hot dogs and bacon and sausage. Um, yeah, so we eat all those. I know you can find sugar-free bacon. It can be expensive. And so sometimes like when you're going out to eat and you're ordering bacon, it's going to have sugar in it. It's going to be cured with sugar, but it's so minimal. 
So for me, that gets a free pass. I do what I can do like when I'm buying it, but if I'm going out to eat, I'm ordering bacon. To me, it doesn't taste sweet, so it's not like it's triggering cravings for sugar. So that gets a free pass for me. Hot dogs, we'll eat hot dogs occasionally. Um, there's brands that are like super clean. I hate the word clean, but I don't know how else to explain it. Sausage, I have yet to find... Well, I will say Peterson's has a spicy sausage that doesn't have sugar, but their regular sausage, um, their breakfast sausage has some honey in it. But again, like it's so minimal, like it, it shows up, like I don't even know if it shows up as a carb. So for me, those are ingredients that I'm fine with. Um, I also do natural flavors. I have my little bubbly right here and they have natural flavors. I know it doesn't work for some people, but it does for me. Carnivore health wins. And then this is, I'm going to kind of lump this in with how we started carnivore because all my health wins, like I didn't know I was going to get. So when we started carnivore, Jeff was sending me Dr. Paul Saladino's TikToks. He sent them to me for a month before we talked about it. And then I was like, why are you sending me these? Like, should we not be eating vegetables? Um, you know, we've been keto in the past on and off seven years, um, but I never heard of carnivore or animal based while I was eating that way. And I didn't follow people in the carnivore space. Like Saladino was my first intro. So I didn't know what we were getting ourselves into. I didn't know like what all the possible health benefits could be. So I did it because I was like, I was sick and tired of feeling sick and tired and I was overweight. So for me, that was the driving factor was weight. So health wins that I didn't even know what happened is like my acne, I've had acne my whole life. It cleared up. Uh, no gas, no bloating, the mental health thing. I was able to go off of my Zoloft for anxiety and depression. And what else? So obviously weight loss. God, I should really take notes before I do a podcast. Um, the food freedom, even though that doesn't make sense, but like I'm no longer like obsessed with food. I mean, okay, I'm obsessed with carnivore bars and these tin salmons right now. I actually have a stack of salmon in my purse. <laughs> um, but it's like a good addiction. Like I'm excited to eat my food. It's not like, you know, thinking about donuts all the time. So those are my health wins that I didn't even realize that I could get. You know, now people I feel like do a little research and, and see a lot out there before they dive into carnivore. But we didn't do that. <laughs> we just, well, Jeff did. I will say Jeff did is the research side of things. So he did dive into Barry and Lily Kane and, you know, chafee before we started, but I didn't see any of that. Dairy-free journey and my weight loss update. Okay. So I think I'm at like day 10, maybe of no dairy. It's going great. I don't have cravings for it anymore. So the whole point of me going dairy-free was because I was using heavy cream as a crutch. I've been very stressed. I've been, you know, wanting to emotionally eat and eat my feelings. So I would reach for that cream it was almost like a pacifier <laughs> and I would get a dopamine hit that way. So I've lost 45 pounds. Actually, I've lost all 55 of my pounds incorporating dairy. But for me right now, I just wanted to stop using that as a crutch. I'm ready and anxious to get to my goal weight. So I'm like, I'm just going to do like a reset and just bring it back to basics and keep it super simple. Oh my gosh, a car just pulled up on each side of me and I feel really nervous. <laughs> okay. Carb addicted toddler getting them to eat more meat. Kids can be tricky, but I mean, the tough love side is they're going to eat when they're hungry. So just feed them what you want them to, what you want them to eat. That being said, uh, there's nothing wrong with like easing this, in, easing them into this. My kids still have fruit. They occasionally have crap food. We give them the freedom to have crap food, um, but getting them to eat more meat, have them be involved. Like maybe they can help you do things or what we like to do is also like give them more than one option. So I could totally just eat burger patties all day long, but for me, my kids would get, for my kids, they would get burnout. So you could do burger patties, like instead of, you know, like when we used to do meat, veggie, starch, well, now you can offer like three different animals. So say you do burger patties, you can do some bacon and some like grilled bread cheese or something. So, you know, eat the variety of animals, give them a few options of different animals um, at each meal have things family style, you know, do a big like charcuterie board. Eating with your hands makes it more fun. You can make nuggets. I'm going to make goldfish crackers soon, um, but it's, it's literally just baking cheese. I was going to try and make an actual like batter. I still might, but if you bake cheese, it's almost like Cheez-Its. And 
yeah, just keep exposing them. I remember when my kids were little, they're like, they need 10 exposures. So keep giving them the broccoli. It's like, I think there's a reason why they're not wanting that broccoli. So just continue to expose them to it. Is that it? <laughs> I crossed everything off. Okay, well, that was a lot faster than I thought it would be. Um, let me just make sure I didn't cross something off. Okay. Wow. I was very chatty this morning, so I thought that was going to run a little bit longer, but we will just leave it at that. Keep it short and sweet and no editing involved. We're just going to keep this in one lump sum. <laughs> I love it. Um, let me know in the comments if you're on YouTube, like what else you would like me to touch on, talk about. Let's have a conversation about all this. And if you're listening on your podcast app, I love, you know, if you ever listen to this, like put a screenshot in your story and tag me. I would love that. That rarely happens. <laughs> I'm like, are people actually listening to this thing? So let me know if you're listening. And yeah, I guess that's it for now. Wow. 15 minutes. Go me. All right. I love you guys. Thanks for being here and I'll catch you next time.